So this video is going to be a really important video because I'm seeing a number of different factors for Ethereum which are basically telling me that the price is going to rise significantly in the coming weeks. And so in this video, I basically want to break down everything that I'm seeing and give you guys the full, I guess, bull case for Ethereum. Now, the bull case I have for Ethereum is, as you can see on my screen here, against Bitcoin. So I think Ethereum will perform well against the USD pair. But I think in particular, Ethereum versus Bitcoin, I think Ethereum is going to gain a lot of ground. And I think this Ethereum Bitcoin chart is actually really significant because if what I expect to happen happens, it's going to lead to a break out for Ethereum above this key level here where the red line is, which we have not seen above for over four years, five years, because the last time Ethereum was at this level was in 2018. So it's been like four years and even just this accumulation range that we have here for Ethereum has been going on since May 2021. So that's like 17 months of Ethereum ranging against Bitcoin. And in my opinion, sure, you can look at whatever other factors about how Bitcoin's safer than Ethereum, how Bitcoin's maybe going more renewable, whatever it is. But purely from a adoption perspective and from a tokenomics perspective, I think Ethereum has done a really good job in terms of the NFT side of things. And also with the merge update, now Ethereum, Ethereum is deflationary and we're going to cover this a bit later in the video. But yeah, to sum up my bull case, I think Ethereum is really bullish for a number of factors. And the first one I do want to discuss is the deflation. So as you can see here, Ethereum is very, very soon to go deflationary versus where it was when the merge happened. So when the merge happened, basically the amount of new Ethereum that was being issued cut significantly. And there was also now a burning mechanism where people would spend money to use Ethereum and that Ethereum that they spend would be burnt you know, and it would reduce the total supply of Ethereum. And so you have two factors, right? You have increasing supply and then you have the decreasing supply from people burning Ethereum from using the network. And so when these forces are going against each other, if you have more burning than obviously inflation, it's going to lead to the supply eventually going down. And that's what the chart is showing here, right? And eventually we're getting really close to where once price goes below this line here, basically since the merge, Ethereum has been deflationary, meaning that we've, the total supply of Ethereum has gone down over the course of how long ago was this? 16th of September. So just over a month, month and a half, which is incredibly bullish because there is no crypto, there's no real asset on earth that is deflationary. This is almost never before seen. And I think it's going to cause a really, really interesting positive feedback loop for price because when Ethereum goes deflationary, that's going to be a huge narrative and it's going to drive hype and it's going to bring new people into Ethereum. Oh, wow. Look, the Ethereum price is going up. Oh, wow. It's deflationary. Wow. What does that mean? All right. Let's figure it out. And then they start using Ethereum. When they start using Ethereum, they spend money to send Ethereum or buy NFTs or whatever it is. When they spend money, they spend Ethereum, which gets burnt. When you burn Ethereum, it will decrease the supply of Ethereum. So if there's more people spending, there's more burning, it's going to lead to Ethereum becoming more deflationary. More deflation is going to boost this narrative more and it's going to lead to prices going even higher. And so you can see this sort of loop here. This will eventually happen. It's going to, there's going to be a, a narrative around this deflation, whether it's now or in the future, but this feedback loop will occur. And in my opinion, that's going to be really, really positive for price. And so there's a number of other reasons I'm bullish as well. And um, I just wanted to first show you guys this tweet from LoomDart. So these videos I'm going to be doing on different topics and I'm going to be referencing just different tweets that I find to help give you guys context on what I'm talking about. So most of you guys watching this don't know anything about my funding, my sort of education on funding. And because of that, it's sort of confusing to explain this stuff to you guys, but um, I'll, I'll give you a brief explanation. So I've invented an algorithm called the Hunter algorithm and it uses funding data to basically buy bottoms and sell tops. And I'll show you what the algorithm uh, looks like here. Now I'm going to show you it on the Bitcoin chart. So this is from August 2021 or July 2021 is when we began forward testing. So these are all live signals that we actually got. So it uses funding data to basically tell you where the bottom and the tops are. Funding data basically represents what derivatives traders 
think the market is going to do. And so, when you are using funding data, you want to use it from exchanges that have really bad derivatives traders. Because let's say there's an exchange like Bybit where all these apes are trading and they have no idea what they're doing. If you can find out what they think the market is going to do through the funding data, you can just do the opposite of what the masses do on Bybit and you will actually make money. And this is how the funding data worked and was able to make me money, we use exchanges like Bybit to track funding and we basically would counter trade the derivatives, derivatives traders. And so, this LoomDark guy in this tweet over here has found the new Bybit because Bybit sort of isn't useful anymore. And it's an exchange called BitGet. And what we have here is the BitGet open interest and volume for Ethereum with its derivatives um, pair. And so, you see that the OI, which is the blue line, has increased dramatically. And what that represents is open interest, which is how many people have contracts open for this Ethereum, um, I guess, pair. And you can see that the OI has risen as prices decreased. And if you look at this picture right here, what this is showing is, is the funding rate of each day or each time on BitGet. So, when you have funding data that's negative, negative funding data means that traders are bearish. And I won't go into too much detail, but that's basically what it means, okay? Negative funding means that traders as the vast majority are bearish. And so, when people are bearish and you have open interest rising dramatically, what we have here is, so let's have a look. We go from about 300 million to 1.3 billion in open interest from the Ethereum bottom. So, price has basically not gone up, but open interest has risen a billion dollars. So, there's a billion new people opening positions. And so, what are people thinking when they open these positions? Well, we can find out what they're thinking by looking at the funding data. So, on each of these different, you know, 29th, which is today, 25th, even all the way back here, you can see on pretty much every day, funding was negative, meaning that the, the average BitGet trader was bearish. They were expecting prices to go lower. And so, when there's a billion dollars of new capital trying to short Ethereum, what that leads is a huge short liquidation event that could potentially occur. And that's what we're beginning to see now with Ethereum if we go to the USD pair and we remove this because this isn't useful. You can see that price is rallying now. And all these shorts opened, let me show you the range. All these shorts opened in this region, right? And a little bit above. So, there's all these a billion dollars of people shorting who are now underwater in a losing position. And to, for these people to close their position, they have to actually buy Ethereum. And so, as price, which I think will continue to squeeze up, to higher levels, more people are going to get liquidated and they're going to have to close their short positions and that's going to fuel the rally more. If I give you a classic example of this, this is what happened back in 2019 when we hit the bottom here and we had this rally of about 30% in a day. If you look at the funding data for back here, it was really, really negative and everyone was shorting because they expected Bitcoin to go down, obviously. And we had this rally of about 30%, which was shorts getting liquidated being forced to buy because they're all underwater. So, all these people, they're shorting here, they're shorting, they're shorting here, they're shorting here. Price just keeps going up and up and up. Eventually, they have to close their positions en masse when it gets above this key level. They buy and it pushes price higher. So, something similar, I don't expect a 30% pump, but something similar I think is occurring here because we have a billion dollars of people shorting or at least, I mean, a billion dollars where most people are shorting and bearish opening these positions on Ethereum. And the same is happening for Bitcoin. If we change this to Bitcoin, you can see the same thing. All these positions are opening even as price is flat. And so, to go into a bit more detail here, I want to show you this thread that I wrote covering the reasons which I'm covering in this video. So, deflation was the first one. We already covered this. Ethereum is about to go deflationary, creating a positive feedback loop. The second reason is the one we've already covered, which is how many people are actually bearish Ethereum, shown through funding data, showed for open interest. And the third reason which we are yet to cover is actually the Ethereum Bitcoin chart. So, when I look at this Ethereum Bitcoin chart, what I see here is a reaccumulation range where we've been basically consolidating for 
17 months of up and down. And my expectation is whichever way Ethereum does break, it is going to go really, really, it's going to, it's going to rally or it's going to dump really fast, whichever way we break through. So if we go, let's get my drawing tool here. If Ethereum, let's say just rejects and we go down, we break below, I expect that to be incredibly bearish. If we do what I expect to happen, which is go up, break through, I expect a really, really strong rally for Ethereum hitting these two key levels here, which would be the first resistance at 0.1 Ethereum and 0.15 Ethereum. And that's, you know, a 30 to 60% increase, which is not too crazy. And that, that's just what the technicals are showing me. And it's supported by the different fundamental catalysts that I explained before. And something else I want to cover, which is why I'm actually bullish Ethereum and Bitcoin for at least the next few weeks is this basically this chart here from Tur de Mista. And it's Bitcoin compared against NASDAQ. And you can see here that Bitcoin is in a very, very strong consolidation pattern and it's nearing a breakout. And I know it's a bit of a, <laughs> it's a bit small. You can't really see it, but this is a consolidation pattern. Bitcoin's getting up to the upper level. And if it breaks above there, that's really bullish. And one way to spot which asset is strong and which asset is weak is to see how the assets respond when one of them dumps or one of them pumps. And so, for example, we had Amazon and I think Facebook earnings released. It was one. Of, it was a few of the big tech companies, but there was a few. There was a few big earnings reports released this week, and they were really bearish because the numbers were not looking good, and that led to the stock price of Amazon and Ethereum and stuff dumping. As you can see here, this was a pretty pretty harsh dump, right? Especially for stocks. And let's look at Apple. Actually, Apple was not one of them. It was uh, Facebook, which is Meta. So you can see it gap. They've they've gapped down, right? To 129 to 98. Not good. So people like to say Bitcoin is like a high beta tech stock. They say it, it moves with tech stocks. But that isn't true at the moment because Facebook went down. How much is that? Like 20%? It's about 24%. Facebook went down about 24%. And what did Bitcoin do in the same time frame? It's gone up. So, Bitcoin is decorrelating from many of these large tech stocks. And that's bullish because it's showing that Bitcoin has underlying strength behind it. There's something pushing Bitcoin upwards that won't be defeated by any outside catalyst. Doesn't matter if the stock market was dumping, Bitcoin was actually going to hold its ground. And that's bullish because it means that even in such a bearish scenario, Bitcoin won't drop. And so, if during the worst time Bitcoin doesn't drop, what's it going to do when it gets to the, a better period? What's it going to do when the market starts rallying? And that's just something to keep in mind. And this, this tweet over here explains it more as well. He's, he, this whole thing is ironic. He says, look kid, bear markets are easy. If you want to hold big tech, just hedge by shorting Bitcoin. Bitcoin's just a tech stock with beta. So if tech goes down, Bitcoin will go down more and you'll come out ahead. <laughs> so what he's trying to say is uh, orange is Bitcoin, blue is tech stocks. He's saying that if you want to make money, you should buy tech stocks and then short Bitcoin. So that if you lose money on tech stocks, you'll make it. You'll make up for it because Bitcoin would just drop way more. Well, it went against you because not only did your tech stocks, which you bought, go down, but Bitcoin, which you shorted, it went up in price. So you lost both ways. So it was a double loss. So it's it's just ironic because that narrative is no longer true, and that's really good because it's a it's a bullish sign that there's underlying strength in the market, which will make it hard to drop. And this is supported by the lower time frame technicals here. You can see that Bitcoin is holding above this support level right here on the daily. It's a good sign. And I'm expecting Bitcoin to go higher, but really I'm expecting Ethereum slash Bitcoin to be performing the best, especially as this deflationary narrative starts to kick in. Once this goes deflationary, that's just going to, that's going to cause a racket on Twitter. Everyone's going to be talking about it. Ethereum is going to get hyped and it's going to make this positive feedback loop, in my opinion. And so now that you know that Ethereum is what you probably want to buy, how will we know when this rally ends? Well, a couple of things I would be looking at would be the BitGet data, right? So, if we go down here, let's change this to Ethereum. The price will continue to rally until the people who have tried to short 
get liquidated. How long is the price going to rally for? I'm not sure. It really depends until these people get liquidated. So in order to determine where Ethereum will rally to, you basically need to look at where these traders are going to get liquidated because the market just moves in the direction which will fuck over the most amount of people. That's how that's how crypto works. It's going to go up if the most people would be in pain if the market goes up. So right now, most people think the price is going to dump as reflected by the sentiment shown in funding. So price will rally until these people either get liquidated or they close their positions and flip long. What happens is the inverse will happen. Ethereum price is going to go up high enough that people start to go, oh, wow, it's really bullish now. Like this line, it'll get up here and they'll go, oh, wow, Ethereum's bullish now, deflation, all this shit. And then they'll start longing and you'll see it reflected through here. You'll start to see the funding. It'll be positive. Instead of it being minus 0.01, you'll see plus 0.02. And then you'll go, okay, well, the market is now as a whole bullish. People are expecting higher prices. And what we are buying for now is now priced in. And that's when you'd be looking to sell. And so that's my overview for the Ethereum bull case for the next few weeks. I could be wrong, but there's a lot of confluence here. And confluence is one of the main factors you need in your analysis. If your thesis is only supported by one piece of data, it's not enough. You need multiple. I've got like four or five different um data points that are pointing to the same thing so if you guys like this analysis and you'd like to learn more about the specifics of where you should buy and where you should sell and a bit more depth on everything i've covered in this video i explain everything in my free public telegram community and you'll find a link to that below i've also got some free guides which you'll find a lot of value in it'll teach you about funding it'll teach you about positive feedback loops, everything we covered in this video, you'll be learning inside these free guides. So I recommend you go below to get those and I'll see you in the next video.